Okay, so let's now, our first example. So this example is, uh, for example, you have a wind and a current. So two forces acting on our sailboat. So on the last video, we have some sailboat uh, diagram there. So let's say th these are the forces that acts on a sailboat. The wind on a sail, hitting the, sa the sail, and then the current that pushes the the sailboat okay so these are the forces what are what is the resultant of two forces let's say the force one is 40 newton the direction is 30 degree south of east and the force two 150 newton southwest let us visualize this problem okay so in solving problems I hope you take note of the given, right? So in solving problems, first you have to write the given variables. So in our problem, we have the force one equals, what is it? If you remember, 40 Newton, um, you have to remember it, 30 degree, right? South of East. And then how about our force number two? Our force number two say uh, 150 Newton and Southwest. So there's no angle here, but how can you visualize these angles? Hmm. Perhaps you can draw it. Okay, let's draw this uh, given variables. Okay, so I've drawn here a coordinate system x y or north south and west east so for vector f1 it says 30 newton 30 degree uh, 20, 40 newton 30 degrees south of east where is that south of east hmm. so it should be somewhere here and here okay so that angle is actually this one 40 newton okay and this is your 30 degree 30 degree south of east somewhere there so this is your angle and the second vector is 150 newton southwest so southwest it should be somewhere but there's no angle defined here but what's in between south and west it should be somehow in between the two so if you get to the angle this should be 45 degrees because it is in between south and west and of course uh, this quadrant is 90 degree in between that is 40 degree so let's draw vector uh, f2 f2 is 1 150 this is not to scale guys huh? So just an approximate. So let's say this is your vector F2. And the other one is your vector F1. Okay? So now you, you can visualize that these forces are somewhere going downward. Or, yeah, somewhere going downward because both of them are south. And uh, F2 is longer. So you expect that the sail will move a little bit to the south. So you can visualize it now, the problem. Okay, so now what is the first step? You have to determine the X and Y component of F1 and the X and Y component of F2, perhaps somewhere here, like that. So there is uh, F2, we call it F2X to denote that that is your X component. So let me draw it. So this is like your, your F2, and this is like your F2X, and this is like your F2Y. Okay? And how about for F1? So F1 should be somewhere like here. These are your f1 x and these are your f1 y component okay 
So I remember the equations. Bx equals or ax equals a cosine theta. Ay is equal to uh, a sine theta. So let's solve this problem now. So when solving com uh, vectors using component method, it's better to solve it in a tabular way. So you have x components here. You have y components here. And you have force 1. And we know force 1 has x component and has some y component. Our x component of 1 is f1x. And that is f1 cosine theta. <clears throat> okay? And then for y component, f1y equals f1. Just change the whether sine or cosine. Sine theta. And then you can now substitute the value. f1 from our given is 40 newton. 40 newton cosine. What is our angle? The angle that you're going to use is actually with respect to the positive x-axis. This is very critical. Okay? There are other methods of vector addition. Some assign negative sign, some assign negative, positive to quadrants. But what I do is just use the angle with respect to the positive x-axis. So what you're going to do is, instead of using 30, use this angle. And what is that angle? One complete revolution is 360. If you have 30 degrees here, then you just deduct 30 degrees. So the angle is 360 minus 30. So the angle that you're going to use here is 330 degrees. Again, with respect to the positive x-axis. Okay, so that is the angle that you're going to use here, 330 degrees. And if you get to use your calculator, okay, you can solve it. You should be able to get an answer of, you can try it, okay? You can check if I made a mistake. I think it's about uh, 35, I think, 35. I think it's about 35 Newton. So this is now your X component of F1. And then for F1Y, the Y component, it's the same, but except you are you going to use sine. 40 Newton sine of 330. I told you it's the same, but except sine. So I'm getting your calculator here. Sine of 330 times 40, you should get an answer of negative. So now the negative sign can be included because it's just, you know, what you computed with sine 330. Okay, so these are now our x and y components for the F1. We just started, I told you, we need your brain cells here for this topic. So how about for F2, what is the x component of F2? What is the y component of F2? Same formula, F2 cosine theta. This one, F2 sine theta. And so substitute the value, the value for F2 is, so you have here 150 south of west. And what angle are you going to use? It's not 45, but with respect to the positive x-axis. So if this is 90, 180, and then another 45, so what is it? 90 plus 90, 180, plus 45, what is that angle? 180 plus 45. I think it's 221. You should use your calculator. 221 degrees. So that's the angle that you're going to use with respect to the positive x-axis. Okay, if I made a mistake, oh, good luck. <laughs> so verify. 221. So F2 is, the magnitude of F2 is this one. 150. 150 Newton cosine of, what is it? 2 to 1. 2 to 1 degrees. And using calculator, I think you should get an answer of negative 106. And here, uh, 150 Newton sine of 
two to one degrees, you should get an answer of, use your calculator, negative one, oh, six, uh, these are all Newton. So now we have the X and Y components of F2. Okay, we're just solving for F2 now. So we're not yet done. <laughs> okay, what's next? The next step is, if you're going to take a look at your notes, what's the step two? Add all the X components, add all the Y's. Summation of all the F, X's, and the summation of all the Y's. So add all the F, X. So we have F, 1, X plus F, 2x this uh, this one I mean this one f1x and this two f2x add them together okay so what's the value here f1 is 35 newton plus or it's negative 106 newton you should get an answer of I think it's about negative negative 71 newton you can verify this okay let me write it properly how about for y component add all the y's f1 y plus f2 y so what is f1 y negative 20 minus 106 newton you should get an answer of negative 126 so we now have the summation of x and the summation of y. Look at your notes. Step number three. What's step number three? You can pause this and take a look at your notes. Okay? I'll just draw a little transfer here. So the next step is actually the resultant already for the resultant. And the formula is, follow me, summation of all the fx. All the x component fx squared plus summation of all the fy squared okay these are your formula and then substitute the value the value for fx is uh, negative 71 newton i'm not gonna write the unit we know the unit is newton so i'll just leave it first then summation of all the, the y negative 126 squared quantity squared and what's the answer here use your calculator and you should get an answer of one I don't know is it 145 I think it's about 145 Newton so this is your resultant now are we finished not yet because the resultant is has to have direction okay so to compute for the direction, theta equals inverse tangent of absolute value summation of y over summation of x. And then substitute the value, inverse tangent. What is the summation of y? It's negative 1, 2, 6. And the summation of x, negative 71. So the angle that you should get here is you should calculate your absolute value, so it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. Hmm. And then inverse sign. You have to practice using your calculator how to do this inverse tangent. I'm not going to show it, but you have to try and solve or practice it. And the answer that I get is 60. Yeah, 60. About 60 degrees. Yeah, about 60 degrees. Okay. So you now have these values, but what does it mean? Okay. So let me copy this. What does this mean if we get this value? Okay, so where is this? See, here you have 
the summation of y is negative and the summation of x is negative. So you have, you have to interpret your answer, your final answer. So therefore, the resultant fr, we call it fr or r, or just r, I use r, is 145 newton. And what is the direction? Can you just put here 60 degrees? No. You cannot do that. You have to analyze where this 60 degrees is. Okay, so you have the summation of y negative. Negative y. The summation of y is negative. The summation of x is negative. Okay, so you now have an idea where this line is, where this vector is. So it's somewhere in the x and y. So it's somewhere here. This is your 60 degrees. Okay? That's how you interpret. You have to go back to your summation of y, summation of x. Are they negative or positive? Are they positive or negative? Then you put it in the right place of the quadrant. Here you have positive x, here you have negative y, and here, oh no, no, positive y. Downward you have negative y, and on the left you have negative y. So that's how you answer. So therefore, this symbol means therefore the triple dot. FR, the resultant force is 145 Newton, 60 degree, what? South, west, north, east. What? South of west. So this is now, this now is your Final answer. <laughs> I'm sorry about the, the line. So, yeah, that's your final answer. Okay, I think uh, we can have another example in another video because uh, we can cut this in a smaller bits. I can make another example later, perhaps. Okay, so keep on learning, guys. Review the video, review the procedure, and follow the steps. Okay, hope to see you in the next video. Choose. Bye-bye.